Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Uh, this is section 6.2 again. Uh, we studied compound interest. Uh, we started by annual compounding. And we said that the, this is the formula. P times 1 plus R to the power N. Then periodic compounding. And we said that this is the formula. And then continuous compounding. And we said that uh, this is the formula. And now we will talk about something, some important uh, concept called annual percentage yield. So in example seven, this, this, this was example seven. And uh, there was a comparison here between 8% compounded continuously and 8% compounded quarterly. And we have found that uh, there is $390.87 difference between the two uh, investment types. So how to compare investments? When we invest money at a given compound interest rate, like quarterly, monthly, the method of compounding affects the amount of interest we earn. Of course, it is not the simple interest anymore. It is now compound interest. So a rate of 8% compounded more frequent than annually, semi-annually or quarterly, will earn more than 8% interest per year. At the end of the year, 8% quarterly will give you more than 8% assemble interest. So let us have this example. If $1 is invested for one year, so T here is 1 and P is 1, 8% compounded semi-annually. So 8% this is R and semi-annually means M equals 2. So what would be I? It would be 0 0.04. And for one year, M would be 2, T is 1, so N would be 2. So you know the formula for compounded for finding the future value is S equals P times 1 plus I to the power M, where I is uh, R over M and N is R times T. Now, if you choose P1 and T1, so this formula would be P is 1, if we choose P1. So S would be 1 plus I to the power N is M times T, but T is 1. So it would be 1 plus I to the power M. So the future value would be 1 plus I, which is 0 0.04. So it would be 1.04 to the power M, which is 2 in this case it would be 1.0816. This is the future value. If you subtract the future value minus the original value, P principal, which was $1, you get the interest. So this is the interest after one year, 8%. But when we compound it semi-annually, the actual interest, what we call the annual percentage yield is or the effective annual rate the actual annual rate in this case is 8.16 percent not eight percent so this is the future value one plus i to the power m if you subtract the future value minus p which was one so you will get the formula. 
So 1 plus i, which is r over m to the power m minus 1. This is the future value. And this is the principle when it is equal to 1. When you subtract, you get the actual interest, which is APY. So this is the, the formula to find uh, the annual percentage yield APY. Also, if you, if you do that uh, when compounded continuously, you know compounded continuously, the formula is S equals P times ER to the power T. And when P is 1 and T is 1, okay, one year, so you will find the formula would be E to the power R. And APY would be S minus the original amount, which is S minus 1, or, or ER minus 1. So the APY, the annual percentage yield, in case of continuous compounding, would be E to the power R minus 1. And for the periodic compounding, 1 plus I to the power M minus 1. So uh, let us solve some questions. Suppose a young couple such as Jim and Eden from the application preview found three different investment companies that offered college savings plans. These three different uh, investment. Find the annual percentage yield for each of these plans to discover which plan is best. Of course, the plan that gives you more annual percentage yield would be better. So in one, 10% compounded annually R is 0.1 and compounded annually, so APY by definition is 1 plus I to the power M minus 1. And in this case, I is uh, R over M. But M here is 1 because compounded annually. So it would be just 1 plus point zero one to the power 1. M is 1 minus 1. So it would be 1. It would be, sorry, R, R is 10%, not point it is 0 0.1 sorry okay 10 percent and this is also 0 0.1 and the answer would be 0 0.1 so this is the annual percentage yield so the annual percentage yield in this case would be 10 percent which is equal to r because you compounded it annually so uh, it is the same as the annual percentage yield in this case. There is no change. If you compound more than annually, semi-annually or quarterly, then there will be a difference between the average percentage yield and R. So the first, in the first investment, the annual percentage yield is 10%. In the second kind of investment, R is 0 0.9.098 when you divide 9.8 over 100 quarterly m is 4 and i is 0 0.098 over 4 so a p y would be 1 plus 0 0.089 over 4 to the power m, which is 4 minus 1. And you can use uh, the calculator. <coughs> to the power 4 
minus one and the answer is point one ten one seven so if you multiply by hundred the annual percentage yield in this case is ten point seventeen percent so it's more than the average percentage yield of investment one part C uh, compounded continuously so the annual percentage yield in this case is e to the power r minus 1 so it's e to the power point zero nine six five minus 1 and the answer is point one ten one three so the api is ten point thirteen percent so both of investment b and c is better than a but investment b would be the best plan for them If five percent is invested at six, uh, five fifty-five thousand. Sorry. So this is P is invested at six percent compounded continuously for five years. Find the future value of the investment. Okay, future value is P times e to the power R T. That's the formula. So it is five thousand times e to the power 0 0.06 times 5 and you uh, use the calculator and find the answer the answer would be 6 7 4 9 point two nine. okay So this is the future value of 5,000 after five years. Find the annual percentage yield on an investment that earns 7% compounded semi-annually. Semi -annually. So this is R, semi-annually M is 2. And the formula for the annual percentage yield is 1 plus I, which is R over M to the power m minus 1 so the answer is 0 0.07 1 2 so APY would be 7.12%, better than 7%. How long does it take an investment of $10,000? So this is P to double. Double means it becomes 2P if it is invested at 8% compounded annually. 8% this is R annually so the formula is S equals P 1 plus R to the power N S is 2P equals P which is 10,000 times 1 plus R to the power N Okay, which is T, the number of years. We divide by P. So whatever P is really is not important, you will always get the same answer. 1 plus 0 0.08, I can write it 1.08. And now how to solve this equation for T? I use len. When I use len, I use the properties of len now to bring t down. 
and then I can solve for t. t would be len 2 over len 1.08 and the answer would be Nine point zero zero six. So I can say after nine years, the answer would be nine years. For part B, eight percent compounded continuously. In this case, is is P times E to the power R T. And again, S is 2P. So whatever P is, is not really important. We will get the same answer. Times E to the power. R is 0 0.08 T. So first we divide by P. And then we use len. We apply len to both sides. And len cancels with E because they are inverses of each other. Then T would be len 2 over 0 0.08. And the answer would be 8.66. So 8.66 years. Of course, it is, it is less because compounded continuously is better than compounded annually. How long does it take? 5,000, this is P, to double, so it becomes 2P. If it is invested at 9% compounded monthly. So S is 2P equals P, whatever P is, times 1 plus I, which is R over M to the power R, uh, sorry, M times T. And T is what we need to find. How long? Well, first I divide by P as usual and I'll have here 1.0075 okay, to the power 12T and to find T you need to take len of both sides and then you bring 12t down using the properties of len and now t would be len 2 over 12 len 1.0075 use the calculator and find the answer and check that it is 7.73 so 7.73 years and if you want you can multiply to 12 and change it to months so 92.77 months okay that's the end i hope you enjoyed section 6 point uh, to have a nice time.